Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Um, we've got a bit of a compromise setup today, not gonna lie. Um, it's boiling hot in my room, but it's way, way too noisy to have the windows open. I can actually hear like a little girl shouting on my street. There are loads of primary schools around here, basically. It's an absolute nightmare for filming. And my room's a sauna, so it's not really good combo. But we're gonna get started with the video anyway. Just please excuse any noise. And if I look absolutely boiling hot, because um, I am quite hot, basically. So today's video is gonna be about my zero waste month. So I just wanna explain a little bit more about what I mean before I get started, because I know I'll probably get questioned on it. The challenge that I set myself was not to buy any single-use plastics for one month. So that included things like food, any cleaning products, household items, toiletries, a few more things I can't actually remember right now. That was the basis of the challenge that I set myself. It was actually really sweet because I put it up on my story and so many people said that they wanted to do it with me that I actually ended up setting up like a little Instagram DM group and we all really helped each other out. So thank you to those girls on that group because those girls honestly gave me so many ideas. Like I don't know how I actually would have done it without them and I'm actually thinking about doing another one in a few months time um, so a few more of you can get involved in it. So the aim of this video is really to just run you through like anything that I found difficult, anything that I found easy, ideas, suggestions, opinions, and everything like that, pretty much. So I wanted to start off with the biggest challenge that I face. So I live opposite to Sainsbury's, like it's literally what my flat looks onto, I can see it from here. Um, and I live very, very close to a Lidl. So those are the most accessible shops for me at the moment. My first challenge was going into Sainsbury's and seeing how many items I could buy from my normal shop that were plastic free. And I I think there were two. I think I could buy an onion and a banana. And it is a local Sainsbury, so I'm not saying like the big Sainsbury's is exactly the same. But there was basically nothing. So I eat a lot of snacks. I couldn't buy one snack that wasn't a piece of fruit from Sainsbury's and um, that wasn't covered in plastic. It's really weird because something like that, I guess I see every day and it's only since I'd started the zero waste challenge that I was like horrified by it. I was like, oh my God the whole of Sainsbury's is plastic, basically. So that was really like my first big challenge to overcome, like finding somewhere that I could actually do a shop. So I had a bit of a Google, and I have to say, Google is really, really helpful. There are actually websites that you can search your postcode in and they'll show you like zero waste or more environmental, zero waste or more like environmentally conscious shops near you. And I live in London, which means that actually a ton, I feel like most capital cities or cities in general will probably be quite good for this. I think zero waste shops are quite like a new concept, which means there are a few popping up all over the shop. And there was one really, really close to my house. I'm actually gonna insert some clips of me shopping in the zero waste shop that I found that's quite close to my house in Clapham Junction, which is called Hetu. And they're really, really friendly in there and also very willing to sort of share knowledge and really guide you with products and everything like that and it's very very easy to use so I will insert some clips here that's what it looks like which ones have you tried so far how's it taste I like the it's really good good it's really similar to what you'd get in like Sainsbury's or things just this one's a bit smaller to eat. yeah yeah so I feel like I think it was the Foosley that I preferred yeah because it's a bit bigger. Yeah, it is bigger. But then they've got white chips as well. Hmm? It's just I prefer the whole grain. Du, du, du. Freaking love spaghetti. I know, me too. <laughs> We've got raisins. Oh, I've not had those before. I think those are like those salty split pea things. Oh, I bet they're good actually. Sultanas. And the thing that I've been mixing those with. Shut up, I'm going to move past you. <laughs> Are things like the banana chips and the dates, which have been really, really good, and then nuts as well. And then we've got the walnuts and the cashews and the almonds. They're my favourite ones to mix with, but they've also got Brazil nuts and hazelnuts. Hefty. Um, and it's really good. Mm -hmm. Just check it. Have you? And then I'll get you to fill it. Right, it's not the best. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you. on a bit AWOL today. <laughs> Just the one or a bunch? Are you wanting one for a smoothie or have you had a smoothie? I haven't had a smoothie today. See what it is. <laughs> 
Success. So as you will have seen from those clips, there's a huge range of stuff in Hattu. I was actually really amazed by the number of alternatives that they had in there. One thing that I would suggest is when you're going to zero way shops, take your own bags and Tupperwares and things like that because some they did have a few that you could get. But you still feel a little bit bad taking packaging from places like that because the whole purpose of it is that it's like packaging free. So me and Kate and Flo, my housemates, have like a ton of Tupperwares and like reusable bags and things like that anyway that we've just built up since living in our flat so I took a few of those with me and they were really really useful one thing that I did buy in there that was very useful for this um were uh, these fruit and veg bags so sometimes when you shop at a normal supermarket I know they can be a bit funny about you not separating your fruit and veg into bags so they can like weigh them easier so these were absolutely fab so it's got like a breathable front if you can see so well, I guess they can breathe. Do fruit and veg even breathe? And the little like drawstring thing here. And I just think they look really cool as well, to be honest. So this brand is called Memo. And it actually also writes the weight of the bag on here because obviously these are heavier than a normal plastic bag. So you don't want to be paying extra for your fruit and veg. So these are like 42 grams. And I bought two of these. I'm actually going to buy a few more just for when I do my bigger shops. I've used them so much. And they're also made from fair trade cotton, which I really, really like. So this was a very useful recommendation from the people in Hetu. So starting at food, as you will have seen in the clips, they've got a huge array of like dried goods that you can go and fill your like packages, boxes, whatever up with. So the things that I found really, really useful were dried wholemeal pasta, which I use anyway, like a basmati rice, chickpeas, black beans, anything like that that I use regularly, you could get in there, anything dried. They also have quite a good range of like fresh fruits and vegetables. I do know that places like Sainsbury's do have some items loose like peppers and things like that. I just think my local Sainsbury's isn't as good for that. But I had to had like a quite a big array of things. I would say in general the fruit and vegetables were a little bit more expensive just because they're organic. But you don't necessarily need to be buying organic if you're zero waste. Obviously it's all about like finding a bit of a balance anyway. In terms of snacks, I was absolutely obsessed with the dark chocolate. They have these like massive jars full of like dark chocolate broken up that you buy by the weight and also they have loads of things like dates and nuts and things that I quite like to snack on anyway but I've sort of stopped buying since I lived in London so it sort of made me feel a little bit nostalgic and I could fill up my own boxes with like a fruit and nut mix that I'd sort of made for myself which I thought was a really really cool concept. I would still say that snacks are really really hard to come by though like apart from those there weren't a ton of snacks in there that had sort of reusable packaging but it's a very small zero way shop and that's not to say that other ones in London wouldn't. Maybe there are things you can buy online and um, I'd need to look a little bit further into it. So food wise, there are a few things that I realised would be really, really difficult to do if you were to totally go plastic free. So I love to have a protein smoothie, but I couldn't find any nut milk that didn't have plastic somewhere on the package. And protein powder, I just don't have protein powder that doesn't have a plastic tub or come in like a plastic sachet or anything like that. So do you think it'd be interesting to look into where whether some brands have that available. But I do think a big part of the challenge was to really see like how accessible these kind of items are. And I would say for things like nut milks and protein, they weren't very accessible at all. The other thing that was near enough impossible to buy and I only managed to find in the last few days of my challenge were berries. Even the markets that I visited still have berries in a plastic tub. This was basically gonna be completely impossible. Some people had said to me that you can buy them in like a little wooden cart and thing. I really struggled to find anything like that anywhere and it wasn't until the last few days of the challenge that I went to my local market and he agreed to let me fill my own container from his tub rather than take one of their little plastic containers. I did find that really really difficult because I would say I probably eat some form of berries whether it's like strawberries, raspberries, blueberries or even like grapes to be honest most days and I pretty much had to have a month of not eating them at all just because I couldn't find anywhere that sold them. Going back to the things that I did find really useful though, reusable shop shopping bags, very, very useful. I feel like most people have these these days. So I sort of packed myself a bag to go shopping. So I'd have this and a few more of these with my little reusable shopping bags in there and everything else like that. And then I'd put all my empty containers that I need refilling inside so I could go to Hattu and refill them. So they really encourage you to bring in like your empty containers and fill them up.
up. So I brought in things like my personal washing detergent. This was empty. What I'd usually do is throw it in the bin and just buy another one. But instead, they just let you simply refill it. So they sort of weigh it before and weigh it afterwards. One thing that I did find really cool is the washing detergent that they gave me there. You need slightly less of. So I think overall, I actually saved money on this. Some of the other items I found really, really useful to be able to refill as well were washing up liquid. So this was just my old, I think it was an Aldi or Lidl washing up liquid that I took into the zero waste shop and just refilled it. And that was absolutely amazing. Actually needs refilling again. I completely forgot to take it today. Then I actually purchased this bottle, which I'm obsessed with because I think it looks really organic-y and like a natural. I got this from Ultra Market, which is right by where my family are from when I last went home. And they have like a little zero waste stall at that market if you happen to be from Cheshire or South Manchester. And it's a glass bottle which will literally last for years and years. And I refill this with hand soap now, which is amazing. So I can do that at my zero waste shop as well. Off the top of my head, the only other thing that I could think of that I made use of was filling up my olive oil, which was really good. But I think there were other types of oil, like coconut oil, rapeseed oil, also things like shampoo, conditioner, body wash, a ton of other things that'd be really, really easy to make use of. In my zero waste month, I actually went away twice on holiday. I found it really, really difficult, both at the airport and on holiday, to stick to this. Both times, admittedly, I was being cooked for, so didn't have full control of what's going on. But I did find a few things that were really useful. I really needed a new travel toothbrush. The ones that I'd usually buy would always be plastic. So I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? But my zero waste shop sold these bamboo brushes. I don't know if it will focus for you. This was absolutely amazing. The first time I used it, I was like, oh my God, it's a bit too hard on my teeth. But I actually think all toothbrushes are a bit like that the first time. And after like the second or third time, it's basically exactly the same as a normal toothbrush. So I don't take my electric toothbrush traveling just because I'm often taking hand luggage and it's just quite big. So this bamboo toothbrush has been absolutely amazing. Another thing that I've loved, which was actually something my dad got me for Christmas that were from Urban Outfitters, um, are these metal straws. So I used to use, like years ago, I'd use plastic straws because Ikea sold them in big packs for my smoothies. And I love drinking smoothies with a straw. So these have been amazing. It's because they're metal at one end, but I actually don't like the feeling of metal on my teeth. I know a lot of people have said that, but it's a bit like, like clinky, clangy on your teeth. And these have a rubber end to them. And um, so they're really nice to drink out of, but obviously they'll last you forever. Um, and I've, they're sort of a bit bendy as well. I've got them in four different colors. Don't know where the other one is, but it's a blue one. And it comes with a little cleaner thing. So you can like clean the inside which is really good as well. That was one of the things I always found with reusable straws was that they're really, really difficult to clean. This little pipe cleanery thing is really useful. The other thing that I wanted to address was eating out because unless you're gonna sit at a proper restaurant where you actually don't have full control of like the packaging that they're using for food anyway, eating on the go when you're trying to be pretty much plastic free is basically impossible. At the airport, there were no food options apart from some fresh fruits at all. And I know in London, there are a few cafes and things that you can sort of grab cardboard boxes for, but they're really few and far between. I feel like to be properly plastic free, it takes like a lot of preparation, which isn't a bad thing, but I think you've just got to be really, really organized. I buy quite a lot of takeout drinks as well. And I usually came prepared for this. So I take my own bottles. I don't actually have them on me, but I've got like an iced coffee cup because that's a drink I order quite frequently and also just a water bottle. And I had two experiences. One was at Joe and the Juice and one was at Starbucks where I tried to use them and they did let me use them but I got very very weird looks. They did let me use them but they did also look at me like I had three heads or something and it was like the most bizarre thing or as if I was just being like really really picky. I feel like as it does become more and more common though to take your own containers to places they won't give you as weird looks for doing things like that. The other thing that I wanted to touch on is trying to do my job and reducing my plastic consumption at the same time. I have to say I did feel like a bit of a sense of guilt when I was doing it because I was trying really, really hard with things like food and washing up liquid, anything that I've shown you there. But I received quite a lot of PR packages, which most of the time are wrapped in plastic and the products are plastic based as well. And it's really hard to just turn down packages, especially if you're working with brands and things like that. But that is something I would really, really like to look into. I've been trying to be better at reaching out to brands though, especially once they've gifted me things and just to say like, these are things that I think you could improve on. And I actually put on my Instagram story the other day about a response that I got from a brand that basically said, thank you so, so much for trying to educate us on this. On the back 
of this, they'd had a meeting with a recycled packaging producer um, and they're trying to switch their packaging over to that, which I thought was really, really great. So I think it just goes to show that speaking about it is definitely the way forward. But I do think it'd be very, very difficult to do the job that I do and go completely plastic free. So overall, I would say that my experience was pretty positive, but I did find a lot of things very, very difficult to get hold of. I think the zero waste shops are a complete lifesaver. I don't think I would have been able to do it without those, to be quite honest. And I'll definitely continue shopping there. But I think I'd have a lot of things to learn and a lot of adjustments to make to be able to sort of make my whole life a bit more plastic free. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video and kind of learned a bit from it. It'd be really interesting to know whether you'd consider doing a month like that as well. And I might do it as another challenge soon so we can kind of all get involved together. But if you did enjoy it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in my next video.